Frozen, fragile and far, far away, the Mawson's Hut's historic site at Antarctica's Commonwealth Bay is one of Australia's most important offshore treasurers. The nation's attachment to the icy continent began there a hundred years ago with the first Australasian Antarctic expedition led by Douglas Mawson. That Mawson's huts have survived for a century in the harsh conditions is remarkable, but they've had a lot of help over the last few decades. From Commonwealth Bay, Karen Barlow reports. To come into what feels, you know, a very, um, just a piece of civilization in the vast Antarctic wilderness. You can imagine, you know, Mawson sitting in his chair in his cubicle and people working in the kitchen. Just on one of the bunks here, the little candle in a tin and the book. So I could just imagine just laying there, candle lit, reading his book, snuggled up in his sleeping bag. Douglas Mawson's home of the blizzard, encased in snow and ice. The men of the first Australasian Antarctic expedition are long gone, but their refuge at Commonwealth Bay has survived a century of punishing conditions and early neglect. Most people just get this marvellous sense of history, but the thing that struck me more was just the, the building against the plateau. I just saw this puny little building and thought, how has it lasted all these years? There's a stillness inside the huts, but slowly the frozen continent is trying to reclaim them. Hoarfrost blossoms everywhere, snow is creeping in, while Douglas Mawson's private room resembles a crystal cavern. 18 men lived, ate, slept, wrote in their diaries, existed here on the windiest place on the planet. You have to imagine the catabatic winds trying to rip the ruse right off. Antarctica has so far failed to blow the Mawson refuge out to sea, but the damage over the past 100 years has been considerable. The wind picks up um, not just snow, but it picks up very, very small ice crystals and it just belts them into the wood and you get this incredible abrasion. Um, so all of the grooves where the tongue and groove timbers met were eroded away and then allowed snow ingress into the building. With the transit hut, which is just adjacent to this building as well, um, some of the timbers were abraded down to less than a millimetre thick. The effort to save Mawson's huts began in 1977. A series of expeditions has been made over the decades to excavate, document and repair the Baltic pine buildings. Water damage has been found inside, so conservators overclad the roofs and stabilised the buildings. Work has now begun on the artefacts. It's been um, an interesting process because there are, you know, many, there have been many thoughts on what should be done in the hut and how it should be done, whether anything should be done at all, in fact. And um, that's, you know, it, it's been, um, I guess, interesting to be involved, frustrating at times, but I think the, the right outcomes have been achieved. 1,500 kilometres across the continent is the famous Discovery Hut, a legacy of Robert Falcon Scott's first expedition from 1901 to 1904. It lies in the shadow of the giant US base McMurdo and has been almost totally restored. This hut, uh, though constantly used, uh, was never really loved and lived in like Mawson's hut. Antarctic historian Tom Griffiths still favours our own Mawson's huts. We've still got a lot more to discover. There's sort of layers of meaning still to be unearthed if you like, in Mawson's hut. I like the fact that there's room for the imagination, there's a little bit of mystery about the place. The Australian Antarctic Division manages the site on behalf of the government, but since 1996, the Mawson's Hut's foundation has mounted seven private conservation expeditions. We've raised over $7 million uh, since 1997, and 2.5 of that has been, been in the form of grants uh, special grants from the federal government, uh, but it costs, um, depending on the size of the team, between $300,000 and uh, $450,000 a year uh, to get a team down there, and it can only be uh, for about six or seven weeks working on the ice uh, because of the, uh, the, the conditions. 
public fundraising, such as the sale of these Frank Mawson's Hutz letters, supports the work. Millions are needed to finish the job. We'd like to mount uh, expeditions uh, every year for the next um, uh, four to five years. Uh, and thereafter, it'll be on an ongoing maintenance uh, uh, basis. The hut itself is, is, remains very solid, um, uh, which is re remarkable uh, because of its uh, design and ingenuity of, the, of Mawson's team who put it together. The management plan for Mawson's huts will soon expire, and a new one will need to be drawn up with heritage experts. The Australian Antarctic Division wants to be more involved in the heritage site, a financial and logistical challenge for the government agency. Neither the division nor the Mawson's Huts Foundation could do work at Commonwealth Bay without the other. I think if we can get the two um, organisations working even harder, closer and, and hopefully being able to generate, you know, or put more funds I guess into the process, then I'm sure we're going to be, be able to get a really good outcome for the building, the place and the whole experience. Very few Australians will ever get the opportunity to travel to Antarctica to see Mawson's huts. Mawson artefacts can be found in many museums. There are the men's vivid diaries. And a replica of Mawson's huts is about to be built in Hobart as a tourist attraction. Which leaves the real thing standing sentinel on the ice.